Hi everyone, it's Jeff from Itoso Crafts. Thank you for joining me today. We're independent stamping up demonstrators based in the UK. So if you live in the UK, France, Germany, Austria, and the Netherlands, you'll be able to purchase stamping up products from our online shop. So I'm showcasing the frosted foliage and frosted frames bundle from the upcoming holiday autumn winter catalog, as well as the feels like frost DSP. And I'll be using the ice technique. So you might have seen these projects uh, on our Facebook or YouTube live. So this one I did as a sample. And then this one we did on the live. So it's really glittery and uh, shimmery. It's so pretty in person as well. And this was Paris amazing card that we did. And because of the double ice technique on the frame as well as the, the DSP. It just amazing to look at in real life. So saying that I would actually be using the off cut from this. Um, so if you watch our live, I've actually done the off cut from there. And this one, I don't know if you can see the difference. There's a slightly tinted one on there. Uh, I've actually colored that I overlaid that on top with some rubbing alcohol and a reinker to create that tinted effect. And because I burnished this way too much, all of the ice glit glitter is actually sunk into the adhesive sheet underneath. So instead of binning that, I thought I'll use that and create something with it. So as I said, I'll be using the frosted foliage. Um, so with the sentiment, from there as well as some elements from the die cuts. Um, I'll be used the frames, the small frames to create a smaller frame for my sentiment as well as for the front I'll be decorating using the Papercraft Crew card sketch this week. Um, so I have done a few of the a few of the elements already in preparation because what I actually want to do inside is again from our Facebook live I did a floating pop-up I'll just quickly show you so it just floats up so and I've only done that with one so I'm gonna go through it again uh, but d doubling that so then there's a bit more support underneath so for this so I'll be doing the inside of the card first I'll be going through it in meet in the metric measurements, but I'll talk through with the uh, inches as well. So let's put that aside. So my card base is um, 21 centimeters by 14 centimeters. So that's eight and a quarter by five and a half inch. Um, that's for the front. And for my uh, floating panel, would it is 14 centimeters by 10 centimeters and that is five and a half by three and 15 sixteenth of an inch or four inches would be fine it it'll give enough um, wiggle room for that to go up and down okay and for the mechanism which is going to look like this so but um and i've pre-scored and cut one and a pre-scored one so it'll just hopefully make it a lot faster so the measurement for that is six centimeter by six centimeter or two and a half by two and a half okay so i'll go through the scoring oh my light there and i'll need the metric plate So this is the metric plate here. So with the uh, six, six by six, you score at, actually, you score a diagonal line first in the middle. So align it from there to there. I, as you can see on our normal one, we have a Sharpie line there, but I couldn't find our Sharpie line, but as long as you know where you start, and then you just go down along the 
middle line. Put one corner on the side and then score down towards the diagonal line at one centimeter, three centimeters, and four. And then you basically flip and turn. So you're mirroring what you've already done. So at one, three, and four. And that's all your scoring done. So four inches. So you'll have two and a half. Obviously, it won't be the same because I'm using the same paper. But for the inches imperial measurements, it'll be... So again, score diagonally. And on one side, score at half an inch, one and a quarter, and one and three quarters. Okay. Flip and turn. Half an inch one and a quarter and one and three quarters okay and then you should have something like that so one would be embossed and one would be debossed but we'll we'll be burnishing those folds anyway right so for these so we have that as a so you'll need two of those and snips so you can cut off the corner first because you won't actually need that and then cut in to the inner diagonal line and then on this one you just cut across a straight line through there and then just snip taper it in a little bit more so it, it doesn't it doesn't affect the spine of the card okay and for the burnishing so this one goes out like that so that's where we will be adhering the floating frame and this one goes back in so just turn it over And then fold it that way. Okay. So you should have two like that. So on your base card, I've marked 4.5 centimeters, which is one and three quarters of an inch. So just mark that up. And this time around, I'm actually going to that looks quite is that correct nope I've actually altered my first measurement that's why it looks so low because I had to alter it when I was only doing one uh, me mechanism but for this one three centimeters which is about yeah one in one in three eighteenths or one in a quarter should be fine as well okay so one in a quarter or three centimeters if I mark there's not hardly any thing on there any difference if you can see so that's the three centimeters on top and then one and a quarter so you are basically going to align that score line. Oh yeah, don't forget to fold the middle bit. <laughs> align that middle score line along the spine of the card. And what you're actually going to be adhering to is th these tabs here. Okay, so I'll just do that now. There you go. So just make sure that 
when you adhere the second one it doesn't um, get caught on the first mechanism and when you first fold it down you sometimes it won't come up um, automatically so you just need to basically lift those up okay and then that's gonna go like that okay so that is gonna go there so for the inside panel as I mentioned earlier I have uh, 14 centimeters by 10 so 14 by 10 or five and a half by four inches so you just need to score that in half. Um, you can either do it with a scoring um, tool or fold it in half. I tend to use my scoring tool. So that one would be at seven. So if you do the four inches, it'll be at two inches. Okay, and for the DSP, I'm actually going to use this one, it's so pretty, uh, the feels like Frost DSP, it's such a pretty um, DSP, and then that one I'm actually going to adhere like that. I'm not going to do the ice technique on it. Um, because it might affect the inside of the card, but I think having the ice technique at the front would be enough and just have the DSP in the inside. Okay, so that one, I'm just gonna add glue. Oh yeah, and the DSP is double-sided, so. The DSP is a um, five point five centimeters smaller, um, so it'll have a border around. So point five centimeter is like what is a point five? So probably like one to three eight eighteenths of an inch, or you can do a quarter. Um, yeah, a quarter of an inch difference, so just make that smaller. So, for example, if it's five and a half, it'll be five and a quarter DSP, and then three and three quarters, and then you'll just have a nice border around. Okay, so I haven't actually done this, hopefully, it'll work. And I'm just gonna fold, fold that in. Okay, I'm going to use my thing again. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> right. To so just reinforce that thing and then burnish it. And I'm pressing really hard just so I want that to not have like a crease on it. Okay, so that is done. Before I'm gonna add that onto the base, I've actually done the sentiment already, which is here. So I've used the stamp uh, for the sentiment, uh, wishing you a season full of family, friends, and happiness. And I've actually used the frame to make that smaller. So I've used this card as an inspiration to create that smaller. And the way I did that was I stamped it on Whisper White, die cut through it there, moved the die 
and then just align it kind of like straight you can use washi tape to keep it in place and things but sometimes it slots in into place within the stitch design of the die so that's how I've made that smaller and I'm just gonna do it down there and because it's gonna be you want it to remain flat you don't really want to add too much uh, layers on these okay right so that's done and this time I'm gonna make it go down and to align it so this was my there so to align it you can either align it up there so add glue to one side actually I'm just gonna add glue to all of them Fold it in half and you want to align the top to the top there so when you close it it doesn't go over the page over the card so you just want to close this up slightly so push that in the middle close it up and then when you close it Just make sure that that's not seen. You could always pick through and then move it slightly and then close it. Wait for a couple of seconds or a more than a few seconds. open it up and then just help it down so if we measure if you don't want to do it that way if I measure and give you the measurement from the bottom you could always make a mark so from the bottom that is about 12 1, 1. 1.2 centimeters or right, let's have a look. One, two, three, seven, seven, eight, seven sixteenth of an inch. So you could always mark that, mark that at the bottom and then lie that down. I just found it easier to make sure that it doesn't go above on top. That's how I would do it. I've kept it quite simple. So when it's up like that, people can have it in the mantelpiece and because of the second mechanism it just keeps it much more nice in place so I'm just gonna finish this up with at the front using the sketch so another Knight of Navy cardstock this one again is got a 0.5 border so it's slightly smaller than the card base which is what's that I can't remember Yeah, 3 15 16th of an inch by 5 and 1, two, three. One, two. <laughs> 5 and 5 16th of an inch. So that is 10 centimeters by 30 13.5 centimeters. So I'm just going to add that on. Oh, and I've 
emboss that in the subtle embossing folder just to give a nice texture and I believe the sketch is that way so this one is the seaside spray metallic ribbon I've also die cut a snowflake from the frosted frames and what I've done is I've added Tombow multi, multi liquid glue and then used the ice stamping glitter on there just to give it a bit of more glimmer. There we go. So it's quite plain with no sentiment at the front, but it's got the nice shimmer ice technique on there, albeit it's quite smooth because of the adhesive sheet that I use. Uh, but again, it's accented with the shimmer on the snowflake. And when you open it up, you're greeted with a floating frame pop up or panel <laughs> something so um, it's it'll be nice when it that's up opened up like that so you could always write at the back along with your um, if you do make cards along with your logo and things like that so that is my card for today so if you would like to know more about the ice technique that we've done so using these check out our previous videos subscribe to our channel so you'll be first to see what we've done for any card making hints and tips and tricks and new techniques pop-ups and things like that so it'll be great if you can like subscribe and comment uh, on our youtube and don't forget to check out the link below for um, products that I've used today available from the seventh September 4th uh, or join our team Mitosu Stampers to get the products uh, from the holiday catalog as part of your starter kit. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, bye!